Hi and welcome to my drawing tutorial. I hope your pencils are sharp because we're going to be drawing some portraits. This tutorial is comprised of two different exercises which we will combine in one final work to draw a beautiful and well-structured portrait. Most tutorials and your teachers might have told you to start with a circle and lay down the facial proportions which is a very good way to get into it and unless you already have a good eye for proportions which comes with practice, I highly encourage you start by studying the face and establish some basic guidelines. Personally, I only care for likeness when I'm doing a commission and it's expected of me to make the drawing resemble the picture but otherwise I usually eye the drawing and interpret the reference however I see fit and that's been something which helped me develop a more personal approach to portraiture. But I know many people want to draw something that looks like the reference, so here are the basics. An easy way to get into it is by establishing the guidelines by working directly on the picture. I will be doing this on my iPad because I don't want to print it, but you can definitely print out the picture or even trace the lines on your computer however you see fit. Although I feel like having the picture printed or on a tablet, which is to say more tangible, is easier. For this exercise and for drawing portraits in general, I recommend using pictures with a highlight to shadow contrast and avoid at all cost pictures of celebrities from magazines because those are airbrushed and photoshopped anyway and will just skew your perception of facial structures. I'd also suggest avoiding pictures where the light is hitting the face directly. We need some variation in light and shadow to make the portrait a bit more interesting. So start off by establishing the length of the face by marking the top of it and the chin. Now, unite them and pay attention to the angle. You might be inclined to draw a straight line, but sometimes it's a bit slanted depending on the position of the face. So we'll trace the line that goes through the two pupils. This line might be slanted as well depending on the angle. It's useful to see where the tear ducts are in relation to the nostrils, so we're going to trace these little lines here. Then I like to trace a line kind of where the base of the nose is, then another one where the tip is. Now we're going to trace two lines connecting the edges of the mouth in relation to the eye. If the face wasn't in semi-profile, the edges of the mouth would have directly corresponded to the center of the eye, kind of how it does on the left side in this picture. We will now trace a line that determines where the opening of the mouth is and is going to be in between two other lines that frame the mouth, lips and all. Now we're going to frame the eyes by tracing a line where the waterline is and one where the upper fold of the lid is. Additionally, I like marking where the eyebrows go up to the highest point. And also where the arch of the eyebrow is in relation to the eye. And lastly, I'll finish off by determining the corners of the eye, which puts each eye in a sort of little box. A thing that I suggest doing is noticing roughly what kind of shape the face is. In this case, it's more of an oval. And a thing that goes unmentioned is that the hair is its own sort of entity, so determining where it is in relation to the face is also important. Once you have the guidelines, transfer it onto a piece of paper and from now on it's just a copying game. It's usually good to start with the overall face and assemble a big picture, but now that we have this grid in place, you can go ahead and start where you feel most comfortable. I started with the eye. I suggest using a soft pencil with a thin line so that you can erase it better before refining the picture. We'll get there soon, no worries. For now, I wanted to draw the face without giving much attention to the light and shadow. Just draw the features as you see them. I want you to notice how every element of the face and the face itself is three-dimensional. Think of it as clay modeling more than drawing. 
you add an element here, take a bit from there, and try looking at these 3D surfaces as if you broke them down into individual 3D geometrical shapes. So for the eye, for example, instead of thinking of it as a circle, think of it as a sphere with the lids being added volume that cover it, which implies a different set of planes that kind of fold inward, which are the water lines that kind of border our eyes. This goes for every element of the face, even the eyebrows are an added volume of hair that goes on top of the fact that the area they sit on is naturally bumpier, which in a three-dimensional space makes them stick out on the surface of the face. Don't worry if you don't get this right, honestly, I can't say I'm the best at it, just have fun with it and focus on bold confident lines rather than overworking the same frail hatches. Remember that you're not a copying machine and that accuracy comes with practice. Unless you want art to be your career, art should be therapeutic and it's really not worth stressing over whether something looks exactly like something else. So now that you know how to lay down the proportions of the face, we will move to the second exercise. So I want you to forget about proportions for the while being and just focus on this next technique. I have my picture here, same as I did with the previous exercise. You, you can print it out or work on it on a tablet or computer. And instead of tracing any guideline, I want you to establish the shadow areas and the light areas by tracing them in bulk. I want you to overlook the difference between tone between let's say this shadow and this shadow and just group them all together. It's easy to get lost in minute details when it comes to shading and that results in overworking the drawing which may look tacky. Think of the overall picture and of the values in relation to each other, not independently. This is much easier to do when we overlook the tonal range and just group them together. It can also help you out if you find that your drawings most often turn out flat. This is the easiest way you can sculpt into your shapes and all it takes is approximating kind of where the shadow and light are in relation to each other. I want you to continue doing this for a few other drawings before we move on to doing it on a blank page just to get the hang of it. Granted, this technique isn't going to make for those super photorealistic portraits, but it's a different way of looking at facial structures and a great way too for training your eye for better proportions. Now, I want you to get a blank piece of paper, have your reference picture and try to draw the portrait just using this technique. It's not supposed to take long, on the contrary, I don't want you to get lost in shading details. Do it in bulk and just a tip, squint your eyes when looking at the pictures, you might be surprised how different you see the values then. Dedicate the next one or two pages to drawing some of these shadow and light portraits. And now, for the last stage of this tutorial, we'll combine the two exercises to make a final finished work. I want you to go back to your reference picture and establish the proportions as I've shown you. Then draw the portrait without worrying about shading. You might have already done that in the first exercise, in which case just go back to that drawing and work over it. Here, I am lightly erasing the sketch so that I can still sort of see it to draw over it. Now I'm just reworking the lines a bit more confidently, I'm also working a bit of shading in as I go. The way I draw comes very intuitively to me and I'm not saying that you have to do exactly what I do, but the only way I can explain what I'm doing is I like to draw attention to the center of the face and its features to establish a more intimate connection between the portrait and its viewer. So I concentrate a lot of heavy lines around the eyes, nose and mouth areas. My style is more graphic than the academic realistic drawings, so I take this liberty of upping the contrast by 100 with these dark lines and shadows. 
so not a lot of subtleties here but we can always experiment with different line densities and different opacities just keep it light where the light is and dark where the shadow is So we'll handle the shading in the same technique as we did in the second exercise by eyeing the shadow areas in big bulks. I used a bigger variety of tones in shading this one, but it goes by the same principle as our exercise. I limited my tone range to maybe three or four shades, no more, and I also used three different pencils to do this, um, an H, a 4B, and a 2mm tip mechanical pencil that I used for the lightest values and tracing. You'll see me switch between them quite often. You also see me rest my hand on a piece of paper, which is a common way of avoiding smudging. Where the shadow falls heavy, I'll be using the 4B pencil. I also like to use bold lines and strategically placed points of the face to balance out the composition. So for example, I have a bold line here to counterbalance the dark mass of shade here. It helps frame the face better.
Don't forget to erase the lightest area now and then. Graphite dust tends to build up and before we realize our drawing gets dirty, erasing cleans it up a little and makes the contrast nicer. I also like doing this thing where I emphasize the borders around the shadows, but that is just a personal preference. I want you to observe the values in relation to each other instead of looking at them independently. A good rule to keep in mind is that the light in the shadow is naturally darker than the light in the light. Same goes for the shadow in the light being naturally lighter than the shadow in shadow. Confused? Let me show you. Both these bits are supposed to be hit by the light source, but because this one is in the shade, the light here is darker than the light here, so I've left this bit blank while I lightly shaded its opposite. Or look at this under the eyeshadow here, it's lighter on this side than it is on the other. These are things that, when kept in mind, make a massive difference when shading, rather than trying to copy what you think the shading is from the picture without understanding how values work. And here I'm using a technique called lifting where you use a small bit of putty rubber to lift some of the graphite creating an airier effect. You do this by dabbing the drawing with the putty. So this has been it for me. Thank you guys for watching the video and if you want to see more of me I have a YouTube channel of my own where I post all sorts of tutorials and um, videos about my experience as a fine arts student. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this.